the uh, my colleague there cheering me on. <laughs> so uh, it's a little bit weird uh, not playing in front of an audience because we performers use that feedback. Um, but we love doing this because this is a, a practice for us. Like performing is like a muscle. You have to work it out. So I'm really happy that everyone who join, is joining us tonight was able to make the time. I uh, really appreciate that. Um, the next set of pieces I'm going to play are a set of four preludes that I wrote uh, during the start of the quarantine. So this was sort of my quarantine project. Um, the prelude is a, a, a title that goes to a piece of music usually used at, to introduce a, a larger set of uh, music. And uh, at some point, composers decided that they kind of liked writing preludes and it sort of took on its own life form uh, and became like a, 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 its own thing. And composers started to write sets of preludes, uh, often exploring different cycles of the keys. Uh, I think it's usually because preludes tend to be a little bit shorter and they're a little bit freer in form. So it's fun for the composer to explore lots of different ideas. And that's sort of what this, these sets of four play, preludes were for me. It's a chance for me to explore different writing techniques uh, on the guitar because I'm a little bit new to composing for the instrument. Uh, so I hope to write more. Uh, one day, maybe something in all the keys, but that's a difficult task on the guitar. So here's the first four uh, of, of my preludes. The first one's an F sharp minor, so a little bit sadder feeling. Then, then we go to a major key, then a minor key, and then a major key again.
important I say something about the next piece because uh, the tuning needs a little bit of time to settle. So the next piece is a, a suite I wrote um, in three movements. Uh, the first movement is titled Ballad. And uh, ballad is a traditionally uh, type of narrative poem, uh, poem form. Uh, it has this uh, particular structure uh, that I tried to employ in the music a little bit. Uh, the second movement is called a lullaby, and the third movement is called a waking. Uh, and sort of the idea is that the, the ballad tells the narrative story. Uh, may I picture like maybe a group of people hanging out around a, a campfire or something like that and listening to the story. And then uh, the lullaby is when the, the kids and everyone is, are, they're all ready to go to bed. And then the, the waking is about that moment just when you wake up and you are just trying to remember your dreams. Uh, maybe they're influenced a bit by the, all the interesting stuff that happened in, in the storytelling earlier the last day.
the last piece I'm going to play for you today is a, a, piece, a piece by um, Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco, who is an Italian uh, composer who moved to America just before the outbreak of World War II. He was a, a Jewish, um, so there's obvious political pressures for him to make that move. And in uh, America, he continued and established himself as a really prominent composer. He wrote a lot for Hollywood films. I think I read somewhere that he scored over 200 different movie films, so very successful guy. And uh, we're, really uh, we're really lucky to have him write for the guitar uh, because he brings this outside perspective. He's not necessarily trapped inside of the guitar idioms, uh, which is another nice way of saying that the music he wrote is often very hard <laughs> to play. Um, but he, he wrote a lot for the guitar because he loved it. I think we have almost 100 pieces by him. And this piece that I'm going to play is from a set of 24 uh, caprices that he wrote. Um, the themes of each were based on uh, prints by uh, an, a Spanish artist uh, named De Goya, and each one of them had a caption uh, critiquing or making uh, some satire at Spanish life of the time. And the title of this one uh, translates to something like the, the sleep of reason produces monsters. Uh, so it's kind of grim and dark, but uh, at the end it has this uh, a nice sort of uh, redeeming quality in, in the last few uh, chords. So I think that's Tedesco's way of sort of saying that he, nonetheless, he still has faith in uh, humanity. Um, it's in the form of a theme and variation, so you're going to hear me play the main theme, and then over and over again, the same theme is going to undergo a bunch of different transformations. <laughs> Productions. For everyone watching at home, the room's a little getting a little warm with all the lights. <laughs> but I actually prefer playing uh, in a space that's warm to cold, so.
Okay, thank you very much. Um, we're going to do a five minute intermission now, so now's the perfect time to run and grab your favorite snack or use the washroom. And then we'll ba be back with uh, Luis Medina. Okay, I guess I have to say hi to the camera and everybody else. Welcome back, I guess. Um, you probably know me and if you don't, my name is Luis Medina um, and I'm going to be taking care of this second half of the concert. Uh, I guess before I start, I would like to th say thank you to uh, Crew Studios for an amazing you know, welcoming and for hosting us. Uh, here's for some music. I guess the, the first piece that I'll be performing for you is titled Que Nadie Sepa Mi Sufrir, which roughly translates into Let No One Know My Suffering. Uh, it has a funny story because it's originally written by the Peruvian composer Angel Cabral, um, and then that piece was uh, re uh, written uh, the lyrics uh, by Edith Piaf, the uh, very, very famous French singer. And then one of the best arrangers for the guitar, Roland Diens, took this arrangement and put it on the guitar. So, so took this song and put it on the guitar. So in a way, I have to thank Edith Piaf for introducing the song to Diens so that I can play this awesome Latin music on the guitar. So this is going to be Que Nadie Sepa Mi Sufrir or La Foule in French, um, by, arranged by Diaz, written by Ángel Cabral. <laughs>
probably Alec mentioned something like this, but this is a, a very interesting experience because I'm aware that there's an audience watching, but I don't see the audience other than the crew. So it's just fun. <laughs> Thank you. I love the, the, the thumbs up is all I'm getting. That's fantastic. Um, so the, the next piece that I would like to play for you is titled Old Friend, uh, and it's written by the next door composer from Seattle, uh, Kevin Callahan. Um, he, this piece uh, was originally commissioned by Odaira Sad, uh, one of the best guitarists ever. And um, it's written in three movements. It was commissioned after the, uh, the passing of Odaira Sad's father. So it has a very um, dark undertone in general. And so here is the first movement. Uh, the first movement deals with the, um, the initial, I guess, loss of someone when you first hear about it. And then the anxiety starts building up and then runs all over as you sort of everybody gets the news of someone's passing. So this is Old Friend by Kevin Callahan. After some tuning, of course.
the next piece that I would like to play is the um, one of the most recent uh, acquisitions to my rep, uh, which is kind of not true I, now that I think about it. Because I, I played this piece, I don't know, I want to say 10, maybe 9 or 10 years ago, and I haven't touched it since until maybe a month and a half ago. So uh, the piece that I'll be performing next is titled Un Sueño en la Floresta, or A Dream in, the, uh, in a Flower Bed, uh, by the Uruguayan composer Agustin Barrios. Um, the legend behind this piece is that uh, Barrios woke up from a nap in sort of like in the middle of a forest or a flower uh, field. People are not sure about that. Um, and he dreamt of this piece. So he quickly went and wrote it down. Um, this piece, what it features is a technique called tremolo. Uh, for those who are not familiar with guitar uh, jargon, it, a tremolo is when you just um, use all your fingers, well, almost all your fingers, in succession to repeat the same note a lot so that we can try and create an illusion of a sustained melody. Uh, so without further ado, this is Un Sueño en la Floresta by Agustin Barrios. <laughs>
I see some flaps. <laughs> no, 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 it's a girl. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Imagine they'll be warm by now. They're not. In any case, um, the um, the next piece, just kind of a long, it's made out of four small pieces, is uh, the Sonata Omaggio a Boccherini by the Italian Italian American um, Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco. Uh, you probably are already familiar with this composer because Alec played uh, his. Uh, uh, one of his pieces earlier in the program and um, so this sonata has four movements to it uh, a fast one a slow one a slow one a um, and then a minuetto in, in the third movement and then a fast one again at the end so overall it's about a maybe a 16 to 18 minute uh, four piece work um, What's interesting about uh, this piece, this sonata, is that it was commissioned by the Spanish, the big Spanish uh, guitarist, Andres Segovia. Um, so nowadays, we have two versions of the piece. One that was edited by Segovia, which is what most of us play, and then one based solely on the actual manuscript by Tedesco, which, you know, it's, it's great to see what the composer's original intention was so that we can, you know, maybe try and take some of those into the, the guitar. Uh, probably Alec mentioned Tedesco was not a guitarist, so his pieces are just hardly suited for the guitar. Yet it's great, beautiful music, so we try it anyway. Um, and I guess another fun fact about uh, Tedesco that I was speaking to uh, Alec, uh, he didn't mention, he used to teach, uh, when he moved to the States, he used to teach at uh, UCLA in uh, California. And one of the students that came out of uh, his, his classes was the very world-renowned world John Williams. So to all of those who like Star Wars music and E.T. music and you know, so many more, uh, you can thank Tedesco for it because he taught John Williams. In any case, uh, so this is going to be the Sonata Omaggio a Boccherini by Mario Castelnuovo Tedesco.
Thank you. Um, I forgot to mention that was the last piece of the program. So with that, I would like to thank again Crew Studios for having us and hosting us and trying this crazy times with us. Um, thank you for the Vancouver Guitar Society for uh, Vancouver Classic Guitar Society for uh, putting this together and sponsoring it. Thank you for the Okanagan Festival. Uh, thank you, Alec, for putting all, uh, all of this together. And of course, you know the main thanks to you people watching from home. Uh, without you, we wouldn't have an audience. So thank you so much, keep supporting guitar, and if you would like to learn more about it, please visit VancouverGuitar.org uh, and check out Crew Studios. Yeah, thank you so much. So good night. Oh, October 24th, oh, sorry, we're not done yet. <laughs> uh, we, there's another concert coming up on October 24th. We'll be having Joel Thompson and David Sosa, phenomenal local players. So, you know, tune in and, you know, join us again for another fun concert. Thank you. Did I forget anything? No? Okay, I think we're good. Have a good night. Thank you.